thank you. Hopefully that won't uh, slow down the bandwidth, I don't think. Oh, I think it just records it to my computer. Gotcha. <clears throat> but, I'm going to close down some things to see if that doesn't help to... Whoop. Yeah, I, I had to do that too. I um, <clears throat> I find it off in uh, my computer. Just used to take everything, now it just can't. I've got too much on it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's neat to see. I saw your video, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, with another gentleman, I forget his name, and uh, talking about your books. And it was, I was like, I, I could see the background now that I'm just talking about your life. I really appreciate um, your just doing this because I know that you guys are all very busy. And I even email some of, some of you all, and it's hard to get answers even on email. So I really, yeah. I understand you're very busy. So I appreciate your time. No worries. Happy to do it. Well, um, I guess I just wanted to start, if you're okay with it, just by introducing myself a little bit and then kind of going through a couple questions. And it's not the kind of questions like you do on YouTube. It's more just like a, I, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm learning some things and I'm, I'm finding that I need some direction. And obviously when you've taken the journey that some of us have, you don't know as, you know, all the people that used to go to for wisdom. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> exactly. Um, so anyway, I'm Tim. Um, I live just above Atlanta, and uh, I've got married with four kids, all under age six. Oh man! So it's a busy no house. <laughs> no time. Yeah, I may I may look pretty tired too this morning. Um, it's you're, are you okay if I give you a really short summary of my journey? Okay. So I grew up in a, a Christian home. Um, so you've heard these stories many times, and I went to Bible college to be a pastor. Um, loved, loved the idea of being in full-time ministry. Um, when I was an eight-year-old boy, I read about um, a missionary named Hudson Taylor who had gone to evangelize China uh, back in the day. And it just, I was always inspired by that. And I wanted to be a, a pastor. I went to Bob Jones University for one year. And oh, then wow. she heard that. Yeah. And um, I did <clears throat> recover, but um, <laughs> <laughs> finished my years at a school called Lancaster Bible College in central Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. and loved it. It was a great experience. Um, got a little bit of experience with a, a missions group called New Tribes, uh, now called Ethnos 360, that does tribal evangelism, oh, wow. Bible translation, like uh, Wycliffe Bible Translators is a, is a parallel. Oh, like, um, to like South America or some places like that? Or? Uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of tribes where there's just no real alphabet. Like they might speak a trade language, but there's no alphabet, so that they therefore have no Bible. Wow. And I mean, it's, it's, when I was going through it, it was in the thousands. Um, wow. Yeah. And you could, you know, argue some of them might be able to use a trade language, but in terms of if you just define it as, you know, give them a Bible in their heart language, it was in the thousands um, at that yeah. time. Yeah. So, so medical issues sidetracked that uh, medical and, and medical debt. Um, and speaking of sleep, it was a sleep issue. I had severe insomnia. Uh, moved to Georgia for a very special doctor. I had insomnia for 25 years. A special doctor here cured it quickly with no medicine. It was an amazing wow. experience. Uh, loved loved him for it. And um, but began at that point to kind of reevaluate things, you know, because the ministry was kind of on hold for paying off some medical debt. And so as I kind of got into normal life, you know, just getting a job, it kind of afforded me the time to think, well, what what can I do for God during this time? Yeah. And one of the things that I'd I'd loved is just I love writing. And so I began manuscripts, lots of them about uh, Christian worldview. Uh, I had a prayer book I was working on where instead of speaking your your um, theology, you know, we believe this, we believe that. More like, you know, God, you are this, you are that. It was very, you know, um, uh, second person and making it a, pr it a prayer. And yeah. absolutely enth enthralled with my relationship with with God. And I thought it was, I mean, it was it was real in every sense to me, as you, you sure. know, as everyone would say. Yeah. And where it started from, I, I was, I've always tried to think back, where did this whole thing start from for me? And I had a really good friend, a retired gentleman who um, he, he and his wife do Greyhound Rescue and I was helping him in one of their events. And we had a few minutes to chat and he, I said, you know, just where are you with Christianity? Because I know that he goes to church, you know, but, you know, as, a, as an evangelical, you're always wanting to do share the gospel, sure. make sure oh, yeah. he's saved. Oh, yes. And he, he said, well. He said, I'm, just, I'm not going to get into a big conversation with you, but just let me put this out there. Does it really make sense that God would speak to just one little tribe <laughs> as opposed to the whole world? Does that really make sense? And of course, as a Christian, you have your answers. You know, oh, well, but, yeah, but God elects who he wants to. Um, and it kind of stopped there, but it was kind of like a seed in my head. Uh, a couple of years later, uh, a 
a girl from that I'd grown up with from like kindergarten. Her dad was like a pastor and a Christian school teacher. We grown up as kids and we were like this all stars. We had done the Bible quizzing, memorized thousands of verses together. She was just <clears throat> on fire for the Lord, thoroughly in the Christian worldview. Find out through the grapevine, she's completely turned atheist. I'm like, what happened? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I touched base with her by email. This was like 10 years ago. And it kind of fizzled out because I'm like, I don't know what to say to you. You're just, you're, yeah. I wasn't mean. I just was like, I don't know what to say to answer it. Right. right. Yeah. And so fast forward 10 years. Did, wait, um, did she ever get around to telling you her deconversion story? She did a little bit. Um, I don't know if I understood it all at the time, but she focused a lot on the patriarchy, which made right. me think, you know, you, you do get, a, as a Christian, you do get kind of warned, like, hey, there's these different streams that are going to pull you from God. One of them's evolution. One of them's ultra feminism. It's like <laughs> she got sucked in on um, the patriarchy stuff. So that was my, I just, I like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, God, God uses men. Sure. You know, God picks men to speak his word. You can't argue with that. But <laughs> so this is where it comes to the current store stage. Um, so we got these four beautiful children. Yeah. And. Of course, as a Christian, you're committed to teaching them the Bible, the word of God, the worldview. Yeah. And one of the songs, we, we would do these, you know, Bible time at night, you know, 10, 20 minutes where we do some songs and read a story. Yeah. And one of them is Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. Mm -hmm. And it's just fun. I'm sure you've heard that one. Yeah. You know, the kids are all spinning around, just having mm -hmm. a blast. And it started to dawn on me, like, what? Genocidal warfare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, it really... And, and it, it's, it was a double win because it was like, it wasn't just that was the issue. It was like, why hasn't this been an issue before? Ah. And it was like, a, it started to hit me. It started pulling at me. And I still wasn't. You think, that, well, that's enough to start the process. I wouldn't even say it really started it. But it just kind of got some things going. And a couple of years ago, I, I said something to my wife, who's still a very, very strong believer. Um, even today. Even today. Okay. Very, yeah, very strong believer. Um, I said, just, just so you know, I'm just thinking through some things. I'm not sure where this goes, but I'm I'm more committed to just the truth than to the Bible. Yeah. And I just want to put that out there. Yeah. And she was like, what? How can you be more committed to the truth than the Bible? Like, it just didn't com compute. Truth was a little bit. Bible. Bible yeah. truth, right? So the same yeah. thing. And it was like, um, it was like almost like offensive, it was almost offensive sure. or blasphemous. And uh, long story short, I, I began to find myself dig digging into the stuff that, you know, you talk about and other people do the, the slavery, uh, lots, of, lots of Matt Dillahunty stuff, um, lots of Seth Andrews. And all of a sudden, I find Christopher Hitchens, which, yeah. I mean, that just opens everything up. And so I start listening and I'm like, I don't, I don't know where this is going, but these are really good points. Like, why would we? How to yeah. beat your slave, and, and unless they die within two days, you know you can. You're your okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And like it's just all these wheels are turning, and then you know Ricky Gervais from The Office, yeah. the British yeah. Office. Yeah. He's he at one point was being interviewed, I think, by Richard Dawkins or somebody, but they're talking about the Bible. Uh, he and somebody else, and they say, well, "What do you think about the Bible?" or something, and he starts out with something like, "Well, it's it's obviously." A, a man-made book. It's not divine. <laughs> and I mean, it just hit me like a brick wall. Like, shoot, I actually think I agree with him. Yeah. Like, and that was where it started. I'm like, whoa. And it just, the we I began processing for several more months. And then one Saturday, about literally about a, a year, year ago, uh, almost 11, 11 months ago, um, I'm just sitting at my computer on a Saturday morning, listening to you know one of the videos as you do. Yeah. And I mean, it was like a fire hydrant opened up um, yeah. and it was just within an hour. I was right. fully deconverted. It's like, yeah. shoot, I don't think this is real. Shoot. This has never been real. <laughs> shoot. There's no God. Shoot. And like, sh and then it became, you know, of course, now you're now you're free to start cursing. Shit. There's no eternity. Shit. There's no heaven and hell. And it's like, and all of these wheels are turning. I'm like, shoot. Evolution's probably true. <laughs> the universe is probably 13.8 billion years old. And you're just like, oh my goodness. I remember when I was going through exactly that. And the same thing. It was like, oh, of course evolution is true. Boom. <laughs> it just Yeah, it's yeah. like an immediate how long ago was that for you? Long time. I was just like 20 years old. 
Okay. Um, but I was I was having a theological debate with a friend of mine, and she goes, uh, "Well, Dave, you know the Hindu religion is like three thousand years older than Christianity." And That's right. Always, I remember that story. Yeah, yeah, and um, <laughs> and there's a, it was just like I was a committed Christian, and then boom, one second it's like, "Wait a second, am I right or am I wrong?" And the fact that I'd never even asked myself that question before, yeah, blew my mind. And Christianity just felt fake from then on. It just Yes. Felt obviously fake. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I know there's stories out there of people who supposedly were atheists and converted to Christianity, but once I left, I was like, you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't say anything that could convert me back. And I know you, you should never say never, but, but in the right. sense of like, but once you realize this is mythology, yeah, it's like, you can't undo that, especially yeah. once, once you actually, that was just like, I thought I was deconverted then. And I was. Yeah. But once you start digging from that point to figure out, like, yeah. how did this happen? Exactly. You get, like, re-deconverted over and over. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So, oh, I, forward to, to, oh, sorry, again. No, I love hearing stories like that because it just, it brings me back to when I went through that. And uh, well, I'm jealous. Yeah. It's, I wish I was, because I was out as long as you were. <laughs> <laughs> it does make you wonder, though, like Matt Dillahunty had some something, some speech where he said something like, how did I believe this stuff for so long? And it does. It makes it's 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 mind boggling. And the atheist you're going to become is going to be a direct factor of the Christian you were. It's like the, the more committed yeah. to it, the more that's how boom, it's going to flip 180. It is. It is. Because they instill in you this desire to for the truth and saving everyone and then you realize oh yeah this is not the truth and we still have to save everyone you know yeah and you realize yeah. all these cults out there that you were so oh, warned yeah. about you're like i was in one yes. it was just much much bigger and broader base and acceptable i don't know if this happened to you but i was amazed how you know i had more of a christ-like love for everybody once i got out of christianity because all of a sudden everybody else was just human just like me yeah you know? And this is not some alien world we're dumped in. This we belong here. We grew up here. This is our place, our home. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's it's. There's so many aspects of it, and this is kind of getting a little bit toward a couple of things that I wanted to ask you about. Um, my personality is very detail oriented, which is part of why I got insomnia. It was like a mm. <clears throat> like a mental thing. I couldn't shut off the details and the you know yeah. things I was thinking about in the day. But it's it's a positive trait in that I'm very detail oriented, and sure. what what it's allowed me to do is to start taking notes about all the things I'm learning. So I'll watch you know five of your videos and then five of Dr. Bob's videos, and, and you know I'm just I'm taking notes. Yeah. And then I've got you know books, and I guess where where I'm leading to with my story. And this isn't a question yet, but just my my goal is to like there's a couple people I've seen on YouTube who have taken. Of like made a long series of videos where they kind of yeah. walk you through a whole bunch of steps. Yeah, and I kind of feel like like I want to create a series of videos, and this will be a while before I do this because it's it's. I hope I want to make it world class, so to speak. But yeah. like I want to tell someone, look, look, you don't have to believe me. I'm not sure necessarily to proselytize what I believe for sure, but yeah. if you really believe this stuff, <clears throat> there's some stuff that you've never been told. Heck, I, I memorized thousands of verses. I went to Bible college. I read endless books, endless, you know, sermons I heard. It was literally just everything I could get. And yet I never knew almost any of the stuff that you should know. Right. Like, how is that possible? And I kind of feel like people deserve to be told, like, look, there is so much more. And if you really want to commit your life to this stuff, you should at least have a basic understanding of what you're committing to. For sure. For sure. I have a thought. Yeah, I have please. A thought. What if you did a YouTube series, something like the year 1 AD, after conversion, deconversion, and just share what your, where your headspace is, you know, just episode by episode, and, uh, you know, start with your story, start with how weird it is now that you're, where you find yourself, and just yeah. the things you're learning that, that, are, that are exciting you now. I think that would be really compelling. You mean as a precursor to making the, like, the official videos just to start to journey? kind of start yeah keep it personal because i mean there's lots of things out there where people are doing you know thing of the week but as far as like having somebody who's basically a minister turn all that around uh, and talk about the emotional 
thing that would that I think that would reach out to Christians in a way that you know Matt Dillahunty or me you know dissecting things wouldn't be. Um, yeah, you're still at the point where you're like you can like mourn what you're losing, you know, in Christianity, even though yes. you're and and celebrate what you're gaining. Um, yeah, and I think that's a rare and precious thing that would would really strike a chord with people. Was that and, and you can always move into the other stuff too, but yeah, yeah, when the uh, notes are all together. Was was that journey painful for you or were you pretty much for like a year uh, I totally felt discombobulated by it. Uh because the main thing was like where's my magical sphere of protection keeping me safe from all harm, you know, that I, yeah. I, I I had just been kind of bulletproof up to then. And uh, I tell people it was like I was in a plane and the bottom dropped out and I was still flying. And um, yeah, and the was holding me up. It is weird. And it's it's weird, too. I know some people go through like a depression or whatever. Yeah. After a while, I had more peace in the first 30 days than I'd had in 40 years. Same I was here. like, what? I feel so like I thought this would just be like devastating, yeah. especially eternity. You think, all right, I can deal on some level with it's not real but i still want to be like when i die i want to go to magic land magic and i want to be Grand really happy prophet jonah never <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, yeah. it's like and then like, when i die which could be tomorrow i'm yeah. done i'm gone yeah i was totally at peace with it within yeah. within hours it was weird it is funny i had a friend who was in hospice of cancer and he died and he said you know what all the christians in here are freaking out at the thought of dying which is like you think it'd just be the opposite uh, yes, I, we've got. So, I've got several people like that in my life where someone died unexpectedly young, and it's like it's it's like a constant. This is horrible. What a horrible thing! Like, but that person believed in Jesus. If they're in heaven celebrating pain free, what are you so sad about? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot of stuff like that. Well, yeah. <clears throat> one of my questions. Um, I have a bunch of questions. I've got a little list here. Sure, go for it. See over through. I get just, them. FYI, we need to take off around eleven or so, so we just need to keep okay. that in mind. Gotcha. That all yours. Gotcha. Perfect. I appreciate it. So that would be. Uh, uh, I've oh, got about an hour. About an hour. Okay. Um, not naming names at all, but some of the people that I, I see on some of the videos, they have a very laissez faire attitude about their objectives. And I'm sure you know what I'm thinking of, but it's like. Um, Actually, I don't. No. Okay. Well, just I'll, I'll put it more like a made up quote. I don't really <laughs> care what other. <laughs> well, in case ever posts this, I don't want to. I don't want to make anybody. Oh, gotcha, right, right, right. But it, it would be like this: if someone said, "You know what? I'm a mythicist or I'm an atheist. I don't really care what other people believe. I just like studying where this stuff came from." Uh, but I'm not trying to proselytize. I don't want oh, anyone I to try see. to feel pressure. Yeah. And there's a part of me that feels like I, I get it. You, you certainly don't want to proselytize and be like you must believe like me. Yeah. We don't want that kind of dynamic. But like but when you realize how dangerous this stuff is to people, yeah. like yeah. there's they're spending their lives with a worldview that's completely made up. It's pretend yeah. and it messes with you. It messes. I mean, you think about issues like just for example, the, the, the whole shame culture, uh, purity culture, shame culture, sure. you're, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and, and just, I was thinking recently about the whole fantasy issue where if you were to ask a Christian, for example, you know, why is, um, for example, pornography wrong you would say well it's, it's it's fantasy and you should focus on the reality of what god's given you and your spouse well, that's it's ironic. like yeah don't go into fantasy land because it's so <laughs> it's so damaging to you it's like your whole world view is fantasy land yeah. Yeah. it's like you, you you'll you'll take a healthy path on this perhaps but then you'll go unhealthy on everything else right and i'm like i i get it that we need to be like hey everyone believe what they want but especially for the kids i'm like this stuff oh, is Sure. This is brainwashing. This yeah. is a cult. It is. It is. Um, and well, there's one thing. I mean, there's no one magic bullet to solve everybody. So I think some people will respond better to, look, I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just saying it. Yeah. And other people are, Christianity is evil and wrong, and this is why, blah, 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 boom. You know, and I think there's a place for both of it. Um, yeah. I think what you could really bring to the table right now is your that Christian side of you is still really close to your heart and you, you know, you feel it. And the, the thought of like diaring that now while you still have it uh, makes me wish I had done that, you know, 20, 20 30 years ago, <laughs> how many years ago? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, because it, it's, it's interesting to see 
that transformation, like things that really used to bother you, they're not an issue at all anymore. Yeah. And things that you used to take, you know, laissez-faire attitude to is like, no, we have to do something about it because it's us up to us. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I, I think especially when I think about the kids, I think, and obviously you can't, you know, override if, if, if a parent in their house is teaching their kids something, you know, that's their private property, that's their family. But just in the, in the sense of big picture, trying to put out just waves that might impact some people on some low level, yeah. just trying to say, look, we as, as atheists, we cannot afford to not be somewhat, for lack of a better term, militant. Like we have to be active and yeah. This is not just like, well, I'm an atheist, but I don't care what you believe. You can go believe in the wall for all I care. Right. It's like, no, if, if you do want to believe in something, fine. But if you're going to teach your kids and instill in them this fear, yeah. like Seth Andrews was just uh, interviewing recently two, two uh, young girls who had, they were writing secular books for other kids. And it was, it was really cool. But there was, the dad was being interviewed and he was saying, you know, my, my little girl was told by her, her schoolmates that she's going to go burn in hell. Yeah. It's like, that's that's like, that has to stop. It has yeah. to stop. Yeah. I just, I feel that burden. I don't know if that. I do too. I just, I don't have an answer on what's the best way to combat it, you know, cause it's, it's something that each of us has to do ourselves and, um, and there's no right way or wrong way to it. You know, it's like some things you'll, you'll, you and I, we got hit by all these things, but maybe one thing went in and one thing over here went in. And those are the, the things that made it through the armor and uh, and it, yeah. it and all the change took place from within. You know, there's only so much external stuff can do it. But yeah, he did a great job of of just asking this nice Socratic question: Is does it make sense that he would do this one little thing over here? And you yeah, know, he's created the whole and universe, but he just wants to talk to this one dude in you know yeah. Yeah. And then he doesn't talk to anybody for a couple hundred years, and when he comes back, he talks to that specific group one more time. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the questions I want to ask about on this level is the tone of atheism, the tone of atheists who are doing a lot of YouTube videos yeah. and blogging. I see a lot of caustic nastiness, again, not naming names, but I, I see some stuff. And obviously my, my heart is to be active and, and, and militant in this to, you know, in the professional and, and friendly sense, but I want to be active. I don't just want to sit back and believe what I believe in a, in a corner. But I see a lot of tone that's not very inviting. I see a lot of people saying things that basically would, it'd almost be like if you were to convince someone else to leave, to, to deconvert and become an atheist, they still wouldn't want to be your friend because, oh, yeah, yeah, you were right about atheism, but you're still a jerk. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And that's the balancing act in all my books that I try to be very sympathetic and very no bullshit. It's like, um, yeah. I, I, I get asked, well, I, when I lived in the Bay Area, I got asked to speak to a lot of church groups who would come up there. Um, and I'd almost always start out by, you know, I like you, you like me. We don't agree the same things. One of us is wrong in this room. <laughs> you know, maybe we're both wrong, you know. Um, and so they would invite that way And just say, but this is what I think and why I think it, you know. So they would invite you, like, to give the other side of the coin? Of yeah, there, there were, like, Christian student groups that would, like, truck kids up to the Bay Area to, to talk to atheists or evolutionists or fill in the blankets, you know? Gotcha. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, worked for them for over a decade, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I've, I've seen a couple uh, videos where I think Neil Carter and uh, 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 Sam Harris were invited to churches just to kind of give uh, yeah. the other side of it. It's, 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 I don't see that much, but it's pretty interesting. Yeah. It's a great way to do it. I think you'd be a great candidate for that too, because you speak their language, you know where they're coming from, you know. That that's been a lot of my thought process is you need someone who's been in it enough to know yeah. and not just to know where they're coming from emotionally or 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 with the tone, but but actually knows the content. I mean, I I yeah. literally literally memorized entire books, you know. I don't, do you know what Bible quizzing is? Bible prison? Bible quizzing. Oh, Bible, yes. Yeah, we I mean, it, board drills and, and yeah. yeah, we would we would do it with uh, mostly Mennonite groups. Um, I, I'm not from a Mennonite background, but it was it was uh, us in Pennsylvania. It was in Pennsylvania, yeah, and a bunch of Mennonites. And you sit on these these little electronic pads, and whoever gets their hiney off first, 
the light goes off when the quiz master's bored and he's, you know, you have to then finish the question that, you know, he'll say he says five words. You have to finish what was the question yeah. in full and then you answer it. Um, but to do that, you literally had like two or three books you had to memorize word yeah. for word and master. So you look at people, you know, who've escaped like myself or like this other girl uh, from, my, from my kindergarten story. And yeah. like, we know the Bible through and through. Yeah. And so yeah. we can connect dots better. And that's where the mythicism stuff is just what I wanted to ask about a little bit here is. Oh, sure. It's so easy to connect the dots because you, you can already, I can already remember stuff from the old Testament. You know, I don't, I don't need someone to explain to me, well, this is reflective of that string old Testament. Like, yeah, I already know that. Ooh, and it's, yeah. it's just, it's helpful because I feel like that background can get you <clears throat> in the door with them. I mean, hopefully in the door with them enough to have the conversation. Well, one thing I'd caution you is I don't try to discuss mythicism with Christians um, okay. because I find they can talk about evolution. They can talk about feminism. That, but once you start talking about mythicism, they do not want to give an inch on that. Uh, huh. And I tell people, yeah, um, as scary as everything else is, they can wrap their faith to make room for it, you know. But this is kryptonite for Christianity. If it's true, and I think it is, then boom. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I was I was telling you mentioned that I was telling someone the other day, not the mysticism purely, but telling a Christian about the whole um, Russell Gabirkin stuff and the the oh, dating yeah. of the New Testament, uh, the Old Testament. My, right oh, it's now. mind blowing. But their answer was, their answer was, "May God have mercy on their soul." I Meaning Russell yeah. Gabirkin. I'm like, you can't even talk about it without like they're already thinking about that person's going to burn in hell for saying that. Yeah, uh, yeah. the carrot and stick is uh, <laughs> it's a strong. <laughs> it's content free. You don't need anything except if you know that and nothing else. That's all you yeah. need. You know? So the Russell American thing, you're you're excited about it too. What I am. Um, I, I'm working on a book right now, Sex and Violence in the Bible. Okay. And one of the things I wanted to do was like explain this is why the book of Judges is so fucked up, is because it's later authors trying to say, see, we needed a king. And and then <laughs> the reason the king's chronicles so fucked is see, they should have stuck with this. But you know, thank you. And then he came along in, in May. In May, I, I first heard about him and started reading him. And it just blew my whole framework for this book out of the water. It's like, wait, I can't do this. Because this, you know. Um, uh, yeah. One, there's one thing that's, uh, I don't know if you know about this, but the Elephantine Papyri. It's, yes, I, was, I heard him interviewed about, yeah. I was watching an interview with him and uh, Derek, uh, um, Myth vision on myth vision, and it all of a sudden, taught me, holy shit, what about the elephant papyri? And not even two minutes later, he started talking about the elephant papyri, oh, and that awesome. just blew my mind. It's like, oh, okay, this thing that made no sense to me and it's been kind of sticking in my craw this whole time, all of a sudden made perfect sense. Yeah, and it's like, whoa, okay, um, it is. It's it's like it takes everything that you all have been talking about for so long, and it it doesn't change it at all it just kind of puts it on steroids it says it's like you just took another is it red pill you just <laughs> grabbed the hold it went deeper <laughs> yeah it's, yeah to, to think that these books are like hundreds of years earlier later than we thought um yeah yeah it blows my mind i've been um doing a little bit of studying with the whole pythagorean uh stuff that's in the in the bible the numbers the, and the i came fish and, yeah yeah and i came yeah, across yeah. something that was like pythagoras was basically a you know, from, from the Hebrews. And I was like, okay, you have that flipped. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. It's so funny. Um, my wife and I have just finished this t time travel science fiction uh, series. And in one scene, you see a scribe in, in Babylon writing the first words of, uh, you know, uh, in the beginning, uh, Bereshith. And uh, <laughs> I have it set in Babylon. And it's like, no, no, it should be 200 years later than that. And it should be in Alexandria, Egypt, you know. <laughs> And, uh, it is. I, I admit my I, I'm at like level one or a half of my understanding of it all. But I, I'm so excited to dive in. I feel, I feel like I've got like these these lists of things. Some of them are just going to be covered by default when I go through all of the books, you know, that you've yeah. written and that uh, Dr. Carrier and Dr. Bob have written. Although I don't think anyone can get through all of Dr. Bob's books. He's got so many. <laughs> but I just, you know, the, the big ones, the big guns. Yeah. I got to yeah. get through at least some of them. Have but, you ever much Bart Ehrman? He's I have. I've got two of them. I'm looking at two of them right here. Yeah. He's got some amazing stuff. That um, whole situation frustrates me. I just... Oh, me too. Big time. Big time. Yeah. It's, 
I mean, and it's not, you know, Richard Carrier is not blameless because you know what he's such a, he can be such an asshole about, well, you're just a big liar then. You're insane. You know, it's like, yeah. that is not helpful. <laughs> is but it almost seems like if you were like, a, if you could have Dr. Ehrman on the, on the line and be like, you're basically like 99% a mythicist. And he would say, oh, no, I'm not. Yes. Just like, oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're just, and it's, it is. Yeah. It's That is what I would have liked to see. Yeah. Instead of a price airman debate, I would have loved to see a air, uh, price carrier, uh, Airman carrier debate. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, let me ask about the base. Do you feel like they're a good venue? Cause I feel like sometimes it's more a showmanship and rhetoric as opposed right. to content. This is exactly the thing. And, um, I used to do them all the time and, but for things like mythicism, the more I got into mythicism, the less helpful it is because it's like, boom, vapor lock shut down. And it's like, dude, I'm not even going to try doing this with Christians. I'm, I'll debate it with atheists, but yeah, I would much rather have a discussion of why I think this and why you think that so much more because the debate yeah. by its nature, it's it's not made for, oh, let's unpack all these things that lead to this case. You have, you know, that just doesn't happen. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's and, and and part of it, too, honestly, is it there. I'm, I'm realizing there's a level of scholarship and just not like Ph.D. kind of scholarship, but just very thorough understanding that people get afraid of like that's just too much i can't get into pythagoras i can't understand all the greek mythology it's just it's so much now you're talking he, using hebrew and greek and now yeah. you're talking about all these church fathers and all now the theological term but like it's like you get just buried by up. a dump truck yeah just keeping up is such a thing and the debate structure itself some people like william lane craig are excellent debates even though this is complete crap they're, yeah. they're I don't even know if they believe that it's true, um, but they can format the debate in such a way that it's just all about scoring points and, you know, yeah. nobody learns anything from it. Are there some um, of those guys that you just can't stomach to watch? They're just too... Oh, yeah. Lee Strobel. I'm so sick of his, I was a skeptical atheist bullshit. It's like, your story is a lie. You're such a liar. And, uh, I yeah, I think I'm going to... I think I'm gonna have to do a book just on him down the line when as soon as I finish these other two, because uh, he just every Christian you know they don't even read his book they just wave it like you know a cross at Dracula. <laughs> yeah, there's there's one guy that I just I honestly I can't take more than 10, 20 seconds of him. I forget his name. Um, his, his ministry is cross examined, um, mm -hmm. but uh, he just it, it just he's out there and he just like I yeah. I gotta stop. It's like that guy you you talk the creationist. The wacko creationist guy um, that you just Which warned the guy don't debate him. What's his name? <laughs> Which one? I should say the, the, the one in Arkansas There's that you said don't even debate him. Gish. There's a I don't know. There's 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 several. The one that yeah. does the wack and atheist day. Oh, I, I don't know who that is. Off yeah. the top of my head, yeah. Yeah. I probably recognize the name if you told me, but yeah, um, I probably yeah. I've got too many names on my head spinning. Um, well. The good thing is we live in the age of YouTube, so it's you. I think we make better use of our time by putting out videos or books. Yeah, um, where you can just put out all your what everything you're trying to say, unpack all these weird little niggly details. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Hang on, two seconds, Tim. Lisa what? and I are sure. going to walk in her car, so I'm going to get okay. dressed, and then we'll be back about eleven-ish. Perfect. Okay. All right, I'll see you there. Um, so. What I wanted to ask about next, if you're okay, um, you're still okay on time? Oh, yeah. Okay. One of the things that's um, fascinating to me, and I, I hope I can phrase it, I'm off as been duped or not in the critical thinking, but Acharya, uh, the astrotheology, yeah. the, the numerology, um, that, like, at first glance, you're like, all right, Zeitgeist goes too far. Yeah, but then you look yeah. that that Acharya wrote rebuttals to no, it didn't go too far. I'm actually quite accurate, and you guys don't know what you're talking about. Right. And uh, I wish she were you know still around to to continue mm -hmm. the conversation. But you no, know, she did do rebuttals to the rebuttals. Right. And I'm working through some of those. But regardless of where you know there may be some points that people say, well, that's that's fifty fifty. I'm not sure, but just not not trying to defend Zeitgeist, but just saying sure. astrotheology right. as a topic. Yeah, if it, it feels like that slash numerology mixed, obviously with the whole um, archons, Metatron stuff, that right. the levels of heaven, 
that yeah. that is woven in. It's it's honestly kind of magical to think about how well it's moved, but, it, but it's it's everywhere when you look at it. Yeah, and I, and I think I think we'll never really grasp how wiggy and bizarre Christianity is because we've shaved off the serial numbers for so long that yeah. there's old traces. It's like yeah, that's so funny that you have twelve disciples, twelve tribes of Israel, twelve this, twelve that. You know, yeah. Uh, there's that one and, verse that Jesus says. How many fishes and loaves was it? Seven, 12, get it, get it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And even the fact that there's some of the books that are more <clears throat> obviously into astrotheology, well, they were canonized out, you know? It's like, right. well, right. you had it, you did have the astrotheology and someone decided to kind of whittle yeah. it down so it wasn't as, as obvious, but just, I feel like that's a missing piece. And I, again, I'm, I'm in the, I know a lot, but it's more like once you know a lot, you realize you don't know anything. So I'm at the fringes. But that's kind of where I am with that. It's like, you know, some of our stuff I was totally agreeing with. Some of our stuff, no, no, not at all. Um, and knowing where those lines are um, is mm -hmm. tough. Um, she and I had a very interesting friendship because when when we knew each other, she was writing books I really didn't agree with at all. But mm -hmm. we were both pariahs in biblical studies. And so yeah. we we really bonded together in a way I didn't expect, and uh, yeah, it was very it was very tough when she died suddenly, and they asked yeah. me to speak at her uh, her memorial, and uh, oh, I, I didn't just, know that. Yeah, yeah, it was just very. Um, I never would have seen that coming, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. You're able to be there for them like that. Yeah, but um, but uh, but yeah, there's. There's all kinds of things like that that we only see traces of. Um, there's a in the book I'm doing now. There's a scene. It's the Zipporah, Moses' wife, the inn. That Before whole we, three little verses, and it's like the weirdest thing in the whole Bible. And just breaking down what we can figure out about that, we know that some of these stories go back. Uh, I mean, almost certainly everything about Moses was originally about other people and yeah. and everything in the patriarchs you know um the, there's probably lots of stories that were are just taken whole hog from other gods and slammed into the bible as you know uh, yeah and and Compilations. and we can only see like the fossil traces of that procedure from yeah. here uh but they're there but they're there and you can definitely see them you know and uh yeah. Uh, One thing on that on that note I want to ask about is it feels like the parallelism issue. And I know there's the whole, you know, people trying to find too many parallels. But sure. I feel like one of the things that I'm doing is is kind of going the other direction. And what I mean by that is I'm kind of saying this <clears throat> like, uh, have you ever seen? Um, uh, I forget his name. Apologize. <laughs> I'm losing names here today. But um. The, there's there's a gentleman who does a really good job of, of in this video of talking about the names of God and how they came about. And he, one of his major points is he says, if you're a God who wants to say I am unique, I'm like I'm like none of the others. Why would you want your name to be mixed with? Why would you want to be called L if everyone else is called L? Right. You know what? If you can find that, uh, send it to me because I've got a section in the book that it t talks about exactly that. That would be super helpful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll bring it up here as numbers were chat. Uh, I could probably find yeah. it. Yeah, it's like the, there's a Bible verse saying, oh, yeah, in those days I wasn't called God, I was called L. And it's like that blew my mind. You know? Right, but if you, like, as, as obvious as that fact is, if you were to take it to kind of say, all right, well, let's, let's look at everything yeah. where you talk about what are all the different dynamics yeah. that the Bible has. And I'm, I'm literally laying out, like, everything, like yeah. every little step of, of the, the stories, you're like, Things like obviously the, the the blood magic, you know, the, the big guns, you know, the, the, the blood magic, the um, the the uh, afterlife stuff, uh, the way you know that you, the way you describe it is as fire with hell with Zoroastrianism, but there's a bunch of little little teeny things, and you're like that came and Doctor Bob's really good at this. Would be like he'll oh, yeah. tell you some story, and I was like that little story is from this story, yeah. But like it's 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 endless. Let me just if you're okay, let me just give you a quick example of what I mean. Uh, sure. I love right. this. I love this kind of stuff. So yeah, I it's it's blowing me. And by the way, on this section, my, my, I'm writing a basically not a book, but a, a 
an outline of all my notes that I'm going to use, but okay. it's almost like you need a, an intro for, hey, let me tell you, when I say parallel, I don't mean they just copied it, carbon copy. I mean, they, right. you know, they used it, they dovetails in, there's a, you know, permutation, they the shuffle things thing. around. Yeah. Same thing with the, the mystery face in Christianity. It's like, no, it's not a cookie cutter copy of those. It's, it is one of those, you know. Yeah, exactly. But things like, um, little things like the Garden of Eden, um, uh, trees in mythology, uh, oh, creation of dirt. Oh, uh, George, uh, uh, where's the book I've got? Uh, Arthur George has got a cool book. The mythology of Eden um, goes in, way into all that. I like that. I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Um, even things like, you know, you're on holy ground, take off your shoes. You know, all the other religions have the same thing. And then it's not like, well, okay, well, that proves it was a copy. Yeah. It's a it's an interesting concept of yeah. you're in front of God, so be reverent. Yeah. You could you could certainly pass over that and say that's not really a parallel. But when you look at it, everything, you know, things like um Nazarites having dreams, uh yes. the numerology, the Samson and stuff, the magic, the Orm and Thuman. I really want to dive into Orm and Thuman. Yeah. Um Aaron's rod, the butt of the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. They had arcs all over Egypt. Um, you know, hair is magic with uh, Samson mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. the astro theology and the sun. Yeah, uh, circ slash the sun. Yeah. yeah, circumcision, the 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 priesthood, the animals. Like it just it goes on and on and on of all yeah, these things that keep going into other religions and other places. And other, yeah, it blows my mind. It blows yeah. my mind. Bill Zersher, that's his name. Bill Zersher. He does, uh, I'll, I'll email to you. Yeah, he, he does an absolutely stellar job. I, I wish I had a lot more out there. Um, I'm hop up my, I've got one of these uh, stand up desks, but sometimes I hop on my little bar. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but I guess what I'm asking about is if, and maybe one way to put this would be one of a couple of thoughts. You know how when you look at some of these study Bibles, they'll have all these notes, and sometimes the notes are bigger than, like, they'll just have text yeah. and three quarters notes. It almost feels like there's a need for someone to go through and, um, you know, I'm kind of saying, hey, I'll, I'll try. But, you know, someone needs to go through and just say, there's there's stuff all over the place. Let's let's walk you through every little step. Yeah. Do you know who Stephen Wells is? I don't think I do. He, he did a, a book, which uh, a book slash an online website called The Skeptics Annotated Bible. I've heard of that, yeah. Okay. And it's sort of a fun version of what you're talking about. Um, but uh, for years, I've been thinking somebody like, I, I kept trying to get Dan Barker to do it. Um, somebody to um, do like a Consumer Reports version of the Bible, you know, edition, an atheist edition of the Bible, where instead of saying the little waffle words like, well, some ancient authorities say this instead, talk about, Oh yeah, this came later. This, you know, this is this is a bad translation. This word doesn't mean this. It means this. Yeah. You know? And Dr. Uh, Bob would be a great co-author on something like he that. He would be, but it, it would be a huge undertaking. Huge undertaking. Yeah. And um, and you'd probably need a whole team of people just for the linguistics alone, let alone the analysis of it. Uh, yeah. but I, yeah, that's a book I would love to have. Yeah. Um, How's Dr. Bob doing, by the way? Are you? Um, uh, health wise, I don't know how he's doing. He's always kind of been hit or miss there. Uh, and he just got out of the hospital. Um, we, you know, we don't, we, we kind of like hit and miss each other. Yeah. Uh, I'm in his new anthology that him and John Loftus are doing. Uh, it's called the varieties of mythicism and that's coming out later this year. I've heard you uh, talk about that. I'm really, really looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm, I'm really happy with my chapter on that. And, uh, one of the things I point out is, you know, it's not just, oh, sure. Oh, sure. Hey, you back? You're on a, <laughs> is that Julie? We're on a little uh, kids are on a little walk. They'll be uh, more. I'll be filtering through in a second. No, okay. um, I wanted to ask on that note, um, Doctor Carey's book. What do you think is going to be the outcome of that? I mean, is it going to be well received? You think it's going to be like super niche? Uh, uh, his his on the history of Jesus or his latest one? No, the the Archons, Metatron's one. The yeah. Angels. Um, Honestly, I, I suspect he'll be best known for putting Bayesian analysis into history 100 years from now, 200 years from now. But, I mean, there's no question uh, everything he's talking about in that book, I think, is spot on. And uh, yes. uh, just just laying out the evolution of it all. It's like, yeah, here's what these mystery faces look like. Here's what a Jewish version would look like. Well, bingo, there's Christianity right there. Yeah. And showing in the Old Testament, you know, 
um, yeah. Um, well, I think the dude's amazing. Um, who, who do you think, like, obviously, you know, there, we look at this and say, oh, it's, it's garbage in, in the sense of it's not true, but yeah. it's obviously myth, and it may have been pure myth to the original people with an esoteric yeah. meaning, but it's got a an amazingness when you think they're weaving in Pythagorean math, they're weaving in For Greek sure. Greek mythology stories. Uh, who do you think yeah. did that? Like, who would... Who would be that skilled to do? I mean, I'm assuming it's Alexandrian, Alexandria, Egypt library scholars, but like who exactly, would... exactly. And when you think about like they're using, they're drawing on Babylonian, Egyptian, um, you know, this whole other world of traditions we hardly know anything about. Uh, so we're standing on the shoulders of multiple giants, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hello. Say hi. Oh, hot tank. <laughs> um. They were down a little walk. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember where we're going with that thought. Um, just the idea of who 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 would oh, have yeah. the skill level to do that. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is we see the same kind of things in Mithraism, where you have writers putting together this myth of you know. He misses, or what he's really talking about this constellation where uh, nomical phenomenon um, and they've built a whole relig religion around it um, or at least it's been a major cornerstone of their religion um, and we see the same thing in the New Testament when whoever wrote the Gospels weaves in all these things from the Old Testament scriptures um, to the point where even like Clement when he's quoting Jesus, you know, uh, he's quoting, it's like, wait, Jesus never said that. And then, they, oh, wait, Zechariah said that, or, you know, Jonah said that, you know. Um, and uh, and they, don't have, they don't have any qualms about it at all. It's like, oh, no, see, uh, it's like even the, the New Testament epistles, they say, oh, here's our proof, our good pal Jesus, who we hung around with, and they go to the Old Testament. They don't say anything about, you know, I was out with Jesus one day. They they jump to, the, you know, the sign of no, Jonah or whatever, um, that kind of thing. It is. It's it's fascinating. I apologize. We're a little um, a little noisy here. I'll uh, mute as I as as I uh, ask as questions. And, <laughs> and, we're all... and Paul's always saying everything he knows about Jesus according to scriptures. We know blah blah blah. Third day rose yeah. on third day according to scriptures. Yeah. Well, it's, it's amazing to me that the church fathers issue um, in the sense of like, I, I think some people today get the impression that mythicism is kind of new and it kind of probably, you know, whispered around a hundred years ago, 20 years ago. And it kind of slowly, it's like, this has been around from, I mean, even the thing with, you know, uh, second Peter, you know, we yeah. did not devise cleverly or what is it? <laughs> cleverly devised myths. Yes, it's like, exactly. He was fighting it back exactly. then. Exactly. That that I love that verse because it, it it nails it right on the head. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've read my book Nailed, but there's a guy named Porphyry in the second century. Uh, or was it Porphyry, or was it? I forget which critic it was, but um, I've I've got it. I will admit I've only been through about half of it. <laughs> yeah, there's, um, where he's talking about the, the the whole Sea of Galilee thing. That is like wait 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 stop the presses. That can never happen. You know this, and yeah. that's like it blows my mind. In the second century, third century. People were already calling bullshit on some of this stuff. Yeah. And there, uh, there's a great quote from the Church Father Origen. Basically says, oh, yeah, if you take all this literally, it's crazy nonsense. I just realized there's little ones in here. I should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it's crazy nonsense. Yeah. It makes no sense. And he, he's explicitly saying this that you have to interpret it literally or spiritually. Yeah. Do you have little ones there? No. Well, just cats and dogs. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. They're, I'm, I'm on the earbuds. They won't hear you. Okay. Um, it's it's funny, funny side story. Um, years ago, when I was, um, you know, hoping to, to get married, um, one of the things that happens in a particular subculture of Christian, of evangelical conservative Christianity is you don't really talk to the girl. You talk okay. to your dad. Yeah. And this one dad, I know, I literally never talked to the girl at all. Um, but he went through several interviews with me and I, I seemed to be passing everything. But the one that I didn't pass was I didn't know my church history enough. Oh, and it's funny, now that I've become an atheist and I yeah. study church history, 
I'm realizing if I had studied church history, like maybe to win the girl, you know, to, yeah. if, if that had been a motivator, like I might have deconverted earlier. Like <laughs> you, you study church history and it's like, whoa, on se- not just the mythicist level, but on so many levels and the, yeah. the cover ups and the flat earth theory oh, and the, yeah. the way that they would just tor- literally torture people that didn't agree with them. It's like, right. that's Christianity. Right. It's uh, unbelievable. That reminds me, there's a couple of good books I'd like to throw at you. Do you know who David Madison is? I don't think so. He's an ex clergyman who wrote a book called the, let me see, the top or 10 tough questions for Christianity. I'll have to send it to you. Um, but basically, he's an ex minister and he's his, uh, his breakdown of theology is just brutal because he knows, you know, <coughs> he, he did whole hog, studied it, and, uh, yeah, and this makes no sense. And <laughs> they'll just, you know, he, he just totally calls theologians on their waffle, you know. It's amazing how much once you're on the side of it, yeah. how much you're like, how how did I like the other day, <clears throat> you know who Pine Creek Doug is? No. Pine, you don't know Pine Creek? Pine he Creek, is huh? I'll send this a link. He is an amazing uh guy. He he does some a few where he's just speaking but most of them he basically takes other people's videos and just critiques them gotcha. and he does if he is absolutely 10 out of 10 he's fantastic yeah um but the other day he was doing one where somebody was it was a christian apologist young young man and he was talking to another guy who had converted to catholicism and the guy was had converted to catholicism was trying to trying to uh, convince this guy or at least tell him this is why I became a Catholic. The story starts yeah. talking about the miracles and, and the, you know, the appearance of the, the, the Virgin Mary of Fatima and yeah. I freak Doug literally like, he stops the video and he just he goes, this, this is a grown man. <laughs> and it is it's like, how did I believe this stuff for so uh, long? The blood. Yeah. So we're frozen a little bit. The, the blood magic especially is. Yeah. And the genocide. And it's, do you have a lot when you talk to apologists about the genocide? Do you find that they just try to? I mean, they they try any angle to make it look exactly. okay. Well, and most most of it comes to well, those people were just so bad. They were so bad, 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 bad that they all had to be killed. It's like sure, sure. Yeah. And, you, and you, then they they'll say the same thing about Palestinians today. You know that kind of thing. It's like yeah. Um, yeah. Or they try to rewrite it and say it wasn't so big. It was just a little hate. Oh, I love that too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the dead saints of Jerusalem coming out of their graves and wandering through Jerusalem talking about That was probably just two or three people, you know. That's very yeah. small thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Dude, I'm reading, yeah. Well, I'm reading a book right now uh, from a guy named David T. Lamb, God okay. Behaving Badly. And uh, it's just, you read, like, read a paragraph, shake your head. You know, <laughs> it's it's, it's just so hilarious seeing the mental gymnastics about how no god's not bad he really is god of love blah 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 you know yeah um, he he loves women he exalts them you know not a single woman in the bible ever gets to choose what, who she's gonna marry but you know yeah. yeah and i think the the actual amount of verses excuse me the amount of verses by women excuse me it's like one percent it's something really small like women don't get much of a voice at all. Um, they do not get much of all. Um, that's funny you say that because um, some people think the author of Luke was a woman hmm. because the author goes out of its way, his way, his or her way to include women. And uh, and I I'm not sure quite sure if I buy it, but he he was definitely a big tent writer. He wanted to get everybody into Christianity. So the Gentiles, the Pharisees, you know, he's got Gamaliel in there and he he's, he wants everybody to be in their boards. And I think it may, it may be more of a factor of that. But how weird would it be if like the biggest chunk of the New Testament was written by a woman? Yeah. yeah. Well, could I ask this? I know we're, uh, we've only got 15 minutes left here. Um, looking at the big picture, which we kind of started at, like I ask myself at this point a lot, how do we get this? How do we get this uh, to be a bigger message? Mm. Uh, I mean, you know, to, to mythicists, you're a rock star. Dr. Carey's a rock star. Dr. Bob's a rock star. There's lots, of, lots of rock stars that we can come up with. But when you step out of that world, right, we're just little crickets. tiny crickets. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and I mean, I would 
I would assume even a lot of people don't even know Dr. Ehrman is as is, is broadly as he is. Yeah. And it's, it feels like, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but I've wondered, do we need to focus more on politics? I mean, obviously we do in one sense, but sure. Like, how do we get this message? Um, and again, this isn't self-aggrandizing. I'm not trying to become the, the, you know, the next, you know, Dan Barker or somebody who's, right. who's in the spotlight, but, but it's about the message. How do we get the message yeah. bigger and broader so that like everyone's heard yeah. Jesus might not have ever existed. And by the way, even if he did, yeah. there's, all, there's nothing to this. This it's all myth. It's all just a vapor. Right. Um, how to do it, how to do it. I mean, really it comes down to what can do as a person and, more people we can reach out they're all doing it as a person you know it's not like we're going to do a, a ad campaign you know jesus is all bullshit learn why you know um and maybe you'll come to that someday you know in, in britain they had that there's probably no god so relax campaign yeah. which i thought was brilliant I love it. But yeah, here's here's another good news bad news thing is um as far as i know from my time with the secular student alliance the numbers of religious college age people is lower than it's been in human history and it just keeps going lower um so it that may not that may be a non-issue in 10 years and we'll have to worry about other things like the crazy trump cult and racism and sexism and you know yeah. economic whatnot um so don't lose heart there you know yeah. um i guess my feeling is that sometimes it feels like it's a really amazing and and worthwhile hobby sure like, but I, I want it to go beyond a hobby like i really yeah. want to make a difference and just i hate to put it this way in one sense but <clears throat> for as many people as i would have wanted to send into the kingdom yeah i want to take a hundred times more out <laughs> you yeah. know I, I want people to realize this exactly. isn't real uh this is right. this is pretend it's your calling it's your calling and i've got the same calling i know exactly how you feel um uh, yeah i totally get it um the one caution I would say is you really can't make a living out of it, more or less than make a living out of it. But that's it's really tough. Um, yeah. Any kind of writing, any kind of writer, period, full stop. Um, so if you can have a backup plan and like like you say, make this your your hobby, your three quarters of your life hobby, you know. Yeah. Uh, now, do you have a regular job? Um, I, I've pretty much been a full time writer since 2012. Oh, yeah. Wait, 2008. 2008 um but uh so that that keeps me busy but um but yeah every author i know has a side job except yeah. stephen king you know um <laughs> yeah. it's like acting one percent of the field makes 99 percent of the money you know yeah. um but uh that said i think you should do it i think um i because i think a fresh christian perspective on atheism you know as a new i think that's huge and it because you're so passionate about it and so earnest and you're so you're doing it out of a place of love yeah. and it's not caustic it's not you stupids or christians are stupid for believing this stupid shit um it's just the opposite of that and there's there's not a lot of that out there and i yeah. think you could really make a big impact with that yeah and that's yeah that's my heart a lot it, yeah because it, it's there's a, there's a place for for the, just the bluntness of like, hey, this just doesn't make sense, guys. Let's be honest. It doesn't make sense. Right. But there's also a sense of, uh, you know, they're going to schmooze you a lot. I mean, I, I find that, I don't know if there's a better word for it, but there's Christians just schmooze you. Well, you know, that it might be true, but, um, you know, but the, still, but, but still God, but still Jesus, but still salvation. Yeah. And, and all you can like, do is just keep putting, putting it out there and putting it out there. And like it, it, you said, there's tons of people who are doing that caustically, in your facedly, firebrandedly. Yeah. But there's there's not quite so many who are really doing it with a gentle, you know. Yeah. 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 That's it's funny you say that because it, it uh, it's I've had a lot of experiences in life where you 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 do find that you you want to be able to go have a, a drink with somebody after a conversation, yeah. and some people do. They just you feel like you want to walk away and be done, and it yeah. it feels like that's a real need. Um, I think I, there's Christians out there who would love to listen to you. And be willing to listen to what you have to say way more than anybody else out there. I think. Yeah. Thank you. I'm hoping, hoping I can make an inroad in some, some sense. Yeah. And I think too, just even if, if it's 
just a few people, even if it's not a big following, you know, there, there's the people that want to find you are going to probably try and they're going to find you. And if they need that encouragement of, yeah, you know what? My whole family does is still stuck in this, but yeah. I know that there's, there's a splinter in my mind. I cannot get this, yeah. you know, I can't let this continue. They're going to find encouragement. Just like sure. I find encouragement with you and, you know, Dr. Bob all the time. Sure. And you'll probably find Christians that will want to like debate you, but you, you can say, Hey, we're not having a debate. We're just having a talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Christianity is not a, a religion. It's a relationship. You know? <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. But it, it does make a huge difference having a conversation versus having a debate. Yeah. Because Debates get yelly and, and annoying where, you know what? I may be wrong about this, but this is how I see it. Do, 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 you yeah. know? Could I, I know we uh, run down the clock here. Um, going back to the. We're fine. Stuff. We're, fine. We're okay. fine. Until she comes back and says, okay, Dave, we got to leave. We got all the time in the world. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, numerology. Um, yeah. This is, it's, it's, if I can give you just a little background, just real briefly. It fascinates me for a couple of reasons. Number one, when I grew up, I was told, um, you know, it was, it was like the whole Bible code time. Mm -hmm. And I was told very clearly, there's nothing to that. That is just, sure. that's just bad thinking. So right. I was always thinking, don't really, don't go down that road. Just, there's nothing yeah. to that. And so I never did. Yeah. But then when you realize that this whole thing is so Hellenistic. Yeah. And you're going to get into Pythagoras and the other people around him. And do you know what gematria yeah. is? Yeah, I was, just, yeah, I was literally about to say that word. Yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, uh, so it was a real thing to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you do you feel like that's something that mythicists can kind of dive into better, or do you think that's going to go over people's heads if they'd be like, "Whoa, you guys are into wacko stuff here"? I mean, I know it, everyone's it's one of those topics. That, it's one of those topics that I don't feel like I know enough about it. To do any more than just kind of touch on it and say, "Look, there's something going on here," obviously, um, yeah. and that that's easy because you can just point to, "Oh, 40 days, 40 nights, 40 this, 40 that," you know, 40s and sevens and twelves. The way they keep popping up, it's yeah. just not a coincidence. But um, but yeah, um, it's it's just one of those it's one of those many many rabbit holes that I just haven't had the time to really dig into. But I'm fascinated by it too. From what you know of it, do you think that it was more um, like the people that, that wrote that and wove it into their stories, do you think it was more of them um, trying to, and I, I'm giving you two options, there could be more, but yeah. are, are they trying to weave a code so that someone who oh. knows is going to say, there's actually a, a whole other message here, or or is it just a nod of them to say, this is, you know, we talk about these magic numbers all the time, I'm just going to weave them in, it's just right. going to make you excited to see them, but it's not really a message, it's just, this is the right. my audience, and I, I know you're going to be excited. Yeah, I don't think I, – I think there's a limit to them weaving in secret messages. I think the messages they wove in were like um, this allusion to an Old Testament thing. Um, you know, this parable is really talking about this, really talking about that, more than secret – you know, not, not a code to uncode so much as – as they expect the, the the literate members of the the readers to recognize what they're doing, and everybody else to think it's just a fun story, you know. Yeah. Um, and and like I said, we see that in all kinds of ancient religions too. Um, but um, but yeah, there's there's a, a there, it's such a rabbit hole that you could spend your whole time squirreling away and start finding things that aren't there or never were there, or maybe they are there but don't really matter anymore, you know. Yeah. Um, that's what I found with the astrotheology stuff. It's it's fascinating, yeah. but then you get some people that get into this. This relates to your aura. I'm like, oh come on, we're, yeah, yeah, we're winding yeah. down. Exactly. exactly. Gnostics, especially with Gnostics, you see people get fascinated by Gnostic Christianity, yeah. um, and it's just it's hard to know where to stop with some of this stuff. You know, I think it's important to draw attention to the fact that yeah, there's more going on than we're than's obvious, and um, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you got to pick your battles. Well, apart but, from the subjects I asked you about, are there any that that relate to this that you've kind of had in the back of your mind? That you thought, you know what, this is a such and such is a subject that I really need to master. I mm -hmm. know it's in this story, but I need to master it at some point. Maybe write a book on it. Is there anything that's been kind of on your radar to get to yeah, in the yeah. next few years? I've been kind of focusing on the evolution of religions and the and 
those points that come that clearly come from something else. Um, yeah. But um, numerology really, it's not a bad. It would take a lot of high level deep digging, but I bet you could really bring some really interesting, worthwhile things out of that. Uh, I've got a book or two on biblical numerology, and they were so dry and boring. It's like they just sucked all the life out of the the topic. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, if that's something that really excites you, I would encourage you to to dig deeper on that and talk to people like Dr. Bob and all. Um, well, the, the reason it excites me in part is because I I failed to tell you this is part of my reason for asking about numbers, but numbers were a big part of my story, mm-hmm. my life. They were part of, like when I mentioned I had um, severe insomnia for 25 years, the place it started was, you know, in, in math class, when you're little, when you learn how to take a fraction and make it into a decimal. Yeah. As the day I learned that, my mind grabbed it and wouldn't <laughs> let go. And for the first year of my 25 years of insomnia, um, the, the first year, I just did math facts in my head all night. And oh. it stopped after a year, but the insomnia stayed till this special doctor here in Georgia. But um, what fascinated me was I, I began to study trading. What I was a, I was a, uh, worked for, for a stock broker for eight years, yeah. and I got into studying charts and trading. And are you familiar with the, the Fibonacci's and the Golden Ratio? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you familiar with how that affects trading? Not per se. Um, well, in a, <laughs> wait, before you stop, have you seen the movie Pi? Pi. I don't think I have. Is that Go Jim Carrey? What's it's a, it's a black and white movie from the nineties. I want to say okay. science fiction, very trippy, very mathematical. I think you will totally relate to the main character. I need to. Yeah. Okay. I'll put yeah, that thing. You'll dig it. Well, it's, it's basically just, the, um, the, the gold ratio is 1.618. Um, it's the way that, you know, a sp- spiral expands in the galaxy yeah. or a, a mollusk. Um, and it's all over nature. Yeah. Um, they, they've even said it's in our bodies. Um, well, yeah. apparently the markets, um, also re- respect it. Uh, they'll, like, they'll go. This is again way oversimplifying it. But for example, yeah. if it went from zero to one hundred, it would go down to sixty-one point eight, skyrocket up to one hundred sixty-one point eight, and then drop like a, huh. like a uh, bomb. And it just it there was you mix it with something called harmonics, which is fascinating. It's um, mm-hmm. harmonic ratios, and it's like I love these numbers. I love studying charting as it relates to trading, and I began to realize, you know, I'm not some kind of math genius by any stretch, uh, not even close, but I do enjoy seeing patterns to some extent. Yeah. And I'm not sure I can find them, but I can, when someone points it out, I'm like, oh, I, I really like you know, hearing yeah, how that yeah, works. Yeah. And I feel like I, that, go. I think this is a book you need to write. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, Tim, I think that would be really super cool because you could, you could even get into the science of that and then and, and how it's reflected in the Old Testament. In, not in the, oh, it must be God sort of way, but in the, this is what's driving them to do this stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and that would be fascinating. That, yeah. I, 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 I want to encourage you to do that. I think that would be super cool. Yeah. Well, are there any other topics that you are going to dive into in the next few years for potential books? Uh, uh, the, the, I'm doing sex and violence in the Bible, which is sort of touching on everything I find crazy in the Bible. Um, and I'm going to try to keep to be a short book. I've um, enjoyed your talks on that. That's been really good. Oh, yay. Yeah. That's my favorite, I think. Um, I'm trying to keep the book from being stodgy and, and, and just try to keep it as light and yet still nice deep dives in there, too. Yeah. Um, it's tricky. Uh, da, 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 what else? What else? What else? What else? Ah, nothing that springs to mind right off the top of my head. Uh, gotcha. But I'm very excited about this, this num- numerology business i think that would be really cool uh, yeah yeah i'll definitely share if i ever get uh get get uh deep into it enough to, to do something serious with it i was curious um yeah. send me your address and i'll i'll mail you if i can find that book i'll mail it to you see if it, you get me more value out of it than i did thank you i appreciate that yeah. um i want to ask just uh just final couple of questions here that i wrote down in terms of research it feels like one of the major research areas that like I need to get into more, and I, I mentioned before, I've kind of got this list of all these areas I want to study and need to study to, to you kind of have to study to understand this. Sure. And I'm, I'm getting more into church history, but I'm beginning to realize that I need to get a better grasp on the, like the, the where the Jewish writings were coming from that are like the Talmud and yeah. the other books around that. And then of course, um, 
just all the, the what do you call it, deuterocanonical, apocryphal books. You know, oh, all the, the, books came the rabbinical up. writings and the deuterocanonical. Yeah, it's, it's almost yeah. like, like you know, you, you wouldn't necessarily, you could read the Bible and never see Lilith, but once you realize she's, you know, Lilith is woven into the, into the other books, you're like, yeah. oh, I see how that affects some of the stories. And I mean, you, I, I guess my question is, are you finding, have you done much research into that? And do you find that that rabbit hole really helps elucidate stuff for you? I, I'm finding that sometimes looking at later things like the Babylonian Talmud and writings like that can kind of show that this story keeps evolving this way. Or, or these guys saw the, the problem here and they tried to fix it this way. And I've yeah. found that's really helpful. Um, and that's, that's about as far as I've gone um, mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. But in general, I find that the more you can tie in like this Canaanite thing, this Babylonian thing and sh show how it's informing, uh, the Bible. I am fascinated by that kind of stuff. It's really exciting to me. Yeah. Um, there's another good book. I think it's called something like the lost history of Christianity. And it's talking about, you know, those thousands of years in the middle ages, Christianity in the Middle East and North Africa and how it was different, you know, all these, you know, because Orthodox Christianity yeah. is kind of that stepchild we never talk about between the Catholic Protestant clash. Um, yeah. But it's a, there's some really interesting things going on there, too. Yeah. That's that's what, again, I'm, I've got this whole list of things, but the, the whole yeah. multiple. Never stop, by the way. It never stops. You, the more you know, the more you realize I don't know. And yeah. Which is, good. Which is good. Yeah, it is. The the multiple Christianities is a big thing in my mind. Like, there are sure. so many versions, um, and I I honestly I feel like again going to these lists of things I need to study. I really need to understand the Nag Hammadi stuff and yeah. the Dead Sea Scrolls and the, the other pieces yeah. of this because that's a whole that elucidates so much. And, and, and you know what? They're so bizarre and so out there and so different from what we think of as Christianity. Um, it blows my mind. But do you know about the, um, I think I talked about it in Nailed or one of the other books. It's the, the dead, and not Dead Sea Scrolls, the Nag Hammadi book, um, uh, the Sophia of, of Jesus Christ, the wisdom of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And how it's half finished because they're taking it from this other, the blessings of Eusnos, uh, Eunostos. And uh, and they're literally cutting page. It's like, and his follower and Matthew said to Jesus, and they're just putting words in the into a Christian context. It's so blatant, and it's like, dids, dids, you know. Yeah. Do you um, do you find as you chat as you talk to people about the stuff that are not aware of it that that like what like guys what is the res I'll just broaden the question. What is the reception like when you're talking maybe to Christian friends or family? Uh, are most of them surprised? Like, whoa, I never knew that. Are they like, you know what? You're just into some fringe thing. I don't. Right. Um, well, as an author, I don't really see the reaction real time most of the time. Okay. Um, I only hear it from people responding. But and it, like I said, it's different from everybody. Like one thing will really spark somebody and the other thing over here will really spark. And I never know what those things is going to be. I just go over things that spark me. And it's like, for me, I'm really fascinated when this thing that never quite made perfect sense as a Christian, all of a sudden makes perfect sense when you realize it's this. Seem, something as simple as the fact that character names sometimes are really obviously allegorical in the gospels. Uh, yeah. And I uh, spoke Greek, we'd, we'd get that. And it's, you know. It is, yeah. That is especially the uh, the one that keeps always comes to mind first when I think about that is the whole Barabbas thing. But I know there's a lot, you know. But, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 But but yeah, so many stories are like that, and place names too. And uh, it's yeah. it's very funny when you read like Church Fathers like Origin, explicitly talking about that. You know. Yeah, it's almost like if you you can really see how, you know, I, I mentioned before who who wrote this and who who was who had yeah. the skill to put all these different both Jewish history. Greek mythology, numerology, astrotheology, the yeah. Gnosticism. Who, who could put that together that well? It's fascinating, but you also think, well, who were they writing for? Right. Think, if you were the kind of person that was absolutely steeped in the schools of these subjects, all this stuff would pop out. You couldn't read about, you know, the the sons of thunder in the Gospels and not think about, you know, right. Jesus kids and 
Yeah. Um, uh, somebody, uh, who's the guy that wrote, um, oh, I'm blanking on his name. Armstrong, not Armstrong. Um, the guy who wrote, um, do the Homeric, epi- ep- blah, 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 do the Gospels echo Homer or something like that. Um, oh, uh, McDonald. McDonald. Yes. Dennis yeah. McDonald. Um, uh, yeah. Just talking about how everybody in the Greek world was seeped in Homer and the Iliad, everybody. Yeah. And, and so, and the, and Gamerkin gets into that too. And it's, uh, and you just realize how, how much more obvious this was when it was being written. Uh, on the, on that day. note, do you think of the flip side of that, the, the, the mystery religion side of it, where we don't want outsiders to know, do you think they purposefully did some of this to say, like, look, we know what we're talking about. We're talking about Pythagoras, the Sastra theology. We're talking about the Zodiac, blah, blah, blah. We're, we're referencing, you know, Zeus. But yeah, we know that there's people that don't know these stories. Right. And we when you hear them about not know. the meat and milk and the that credible verse in Mark 11, 411, when he says, now I'm telling you this so you'll know, but not those people, they won't know. That, yeah. that, I mean, do you think that mind. was just a side effect of it, or do you think they purposely were trying to be very secretive about the way they were weaving in Pythagoras and all these other things? It's a good question. I suspect, yeah, I, I, I don't think they were being secretive in the, we're trying to pull one over on people. I think they were just doing it the way things were done that way. It's like they were encoding deep meaning and expecting their the the pre their fellow priests to recognize what they were doing. It's like, yeah. oh, that's from this verse here. Oh, that's from Homer. Oh, that's from you know fill in the yeah. blank. Well, um, with the mystery question though, do you do you think some of that related to the whole archons issue of? I mean, I've read some things where it talked about that some of the secrets may have related with, with, with the math concepts, but specifically to the idea of when you have visions, you will get to levels, you will see angels, and you will need passwords, and uh, we will give you the passwords. Do you yeah. think some of that is is what's behind some of um, What I think is there's no one answer for that, because when we're talking about Christianity, we're talking about Christianities, and they were, they were movements long before there's anybody who's trying to be boss and tell everybody this is what you believe now. Right. Um, and that was going on for so long. I mean, you've got people, I, I think there were definitely people who believed, yeah, this is the secret knowledge and, you know, gospel of Thomas, the ascension of Isaiah. Um, yeah. And if you're in our club, you'll get the secret knowledge, you know, um, ask me how that kind of thing. Um, so there was definitely some of that going on. Yeah. On the note of the visions, the the whole, you know, seeing these angels, seeing the heavens being taken up into the third heaven. The ineffable things that could not be. Yeah. Possible. Yeah. Like, I know a guy who did this. <laughs> he says, I love that. Well, I know that like there's a dynamic with say, speaking in tongues, for example, now where people just yeah. kind of learn to do stuff. Yeah. But I mean, you, you if you're honest with yourself, you'd know if you've had a vision. I would think you'd know if you'd had a vision. Yeah. And yet people are obviously claiming to be having this. Yeah. I, I know I've seen some fringe theories that talk about magic mushrooms, but um, it seems like that's probably not what was behind it. But how do you think they were actually all claiming all these visions of the heavens and the angels and the archons? Right. With, with obviously, from our perspective, they weren't going anywhere and they weren't seeing anything. Right. But for them, they were, they were right. either lying where yeah. they were actually having some experience. Right. And I, I, it comes to what you were saying earlier. It's like, my Christianity is very real, but it's not true. You know, um, it's the motions are real. The thoughts are real. That you're, you know, the, the, the chemicals that it kicks around are real, you know. But, um, um, but do you think they actually thought they had visions? Or do you think I they wonder, were? I, I think they did. I think they did think they had visions. I think... Um, I think they were trained in the world, the ancient world, uh, laid the path to accepting that that's, this is how the gods speak to us is through mm-hmm. visions. Um, do you think Paul, for example, I mean, the, go to the, the biggest one, do you think Paul actually had some kind of, um, I mean, not ex- hallucination. Experience. Yeah. It's hallucination or some kind of just dream that got so vivid. He couldn't put it down. Well, um, it's funny. His, his conversion experience on the road to Damascus, 
he loves talking about himself. He never tells us that story. Luke tells it three times, but he never says anything remotely like that. He always says, oh, I've got it through scripture and revelation, you know. Um, yeah. And they're talking to us through the, the, the scripture. And he thinks no one would know about Jesus except for people like him who had done that, apostles like him. Um, uh, so I think it's funny when you read like Martin Luther and colonial people, they had more experience. Of, I saw um, Elijah underneath the apple tree in the barn or, you know. Um, so it's it doesn't surprise me that they were more open to the thought that they were seeing mystical things. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But I guess there's also the power of suggestion and things like that. If you sure. tell yourself something long enough. Let me tell you about the miracle of Fatima. Where the, um, yeah, exactly. It is. Um, well, it's, I know we're, we're probably going to have to head off soon, but um, I just wanted to say I, I'm absolutely indebted. I mean, beyond indebted to people like you, Dr. Kerry, Dr. Bob, uh, you know, Seth Andrews, and Matt Lunch, I could go on and on. Um, I feel but, the same way for what it's worth. I and mean, we all feel like we're leapfrogging on other people. Yeah. yeah. And this, does it ever strike you to think, like, if you could go back and tell your earlier self and you were still stuck in this, to be like, I mean, if you had told me back in the day, even two years ago, you will someday be an absolute, complete, 110% atheist, atheist. Yeah. I'd be like, there's no, it just, there isn't a universe in the multiverse where that could be true. And you need to start your series with that statement right there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, honestly, I can't tell you enough. I really hope you start doing that. It's something I would love to watch. It's something I'd love to share with people. Yeah. Um, Thank you. you I, I cannot emphasize enough. Do it, do it, do it. Give it a try. See if it, it takes off. Yeah. Uh, and then if that spins off into doing something like deep dives in numerology or deep dives in anything else or debates or whatever, but start with this. Yeah. Because it's, it's real and it's heartfelt. And it's all really strong right now. And yeah. after a few years of atheism, you'll forget what it's like to think like a Christian, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So Which I guess is both good and bad. It's it, it does. I do wonder sometimes what the world will be like in ten years after ten years of of a secular atheism being a yeah. worldview is uh, how you do. Well, do you plus, ever? Mm, good. I was going to say. Plus, right now we are living in a crazy ass times. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever get the point where you think, I love studying this stuff. I love studying how it came about. Yeah. But there's a point at which this stuff has sucked the life out of me for so long. I kind of need to just go, go take a different hobby. Like, I'm yeah. done with the Bible. I'm done with, yeah. I'm obviously done with Christianity, but I'm yeah. done with even understanding the mythicism. Like, I'm just, this stuff has taken enough of my life. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people out there that if they became atheists, they would be more religious than they are now. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah, atheists care about this shit. We, we are, we're the ones actually reading the holy books, you know, and trying to make yeah. sense for them. Um, and, and that's fine too. Um, I mean, that's where I am. But then again, I started doing this 20 years ago and I'm still writing books about it. So maybe I'm, I'm you know, there's no right or wrong answer to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, atheism. There's no right. There's no wrong. It's <laughs> Well, I've appreciated Derek uh, from Myth Vision's perspective. He talks about it like, you know, I think I, I may be misquoting him, but it, the sense of like if someone, you know, if you were caught in like an abusive, you know, relationship yeah. and you get out, yeah. even though you're, you're out and you're done, you and you're fully done, you're still yeah. kind of like, how did I get stuck in that? Like, what, what caused that? And it, it is, there's a, or I mean, stop, maybe Stockholm Syndrome. You know, how did I, how did I fall for that? Yeah. And it's they, almost mesmerizing the process that lets you be in it so long. It is. It is. And it's it's funny having the freedom to look at this and say, what bullshit? It makes it so much more interesting uh, than it was when it's like, and this, oh, our God, Jesus. But I always thought Jesus was a stupid name for anybody. You know, it's just, it sounds like Jesus. It's just, it's just, it's just it was a weird name. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that it's the same as Joshua, like, why, why not pick one that has no secondary? Yeah. 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 It's just all the questions just keep coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Well, could I ask? Uh, could I uh, pick your brain again in a few weeks yeah. or months? And just, I'd I love to. Yeah, time in the world until she comes back, and you know, they went out to get my yeah. sister-in-law's car. So, gotcha. it'll take well, well, I was more meaning um, just in, in the future. I, as I do work through this process, um, if I could 
um, you know, possibly, uh, you know, do this again in a few weeks or months. I'd, I'd love to Absolutely. keep the conversation going. Um, I know there's going to be times in your, with your book writing that you just, you got to block everything out. Sure. But you I know just, what? I mean, yeah, but we can work around that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And honestly too, I, I feel like this, and this is a bit of a side, but I feel like that's almost a, a need. Like I remember <clears throat> uh, when I was growing up, um, my parents went to a, a very big called Dallas Theological Seminary, which is like a bastion of, sure, sure. of uh, probably Baptist uh, theology. But yeah. one of the men back then that was real, he was just like the, the he was like the Tony Campolo. His name was Howard Hendricks. And uh, I sorry, remember you, my, you froze up for a second there. Oh, sorry. I didn't think I said last. Um, there, was a, there was a man named Howard Hendricks. Uh-huh. Um, and, and he he was just, you know, he was the Tony Campolo that day, so to speak. And he, he just, he wasn't just a great teacher. He was a great speaker. And he would, he, the rhetoric was there. Uh, the dynamic was there, and I remember listening to my one of some of my dad's cassette tapes, you know, cassette tapes of some of the classes. <laughs> and one of the things that I've, I literally, I can still hear his voice in my head. He was teaching a, a group of of, of uh, probably pastoral students, um, and he said, "I want to ask you guys this question: Where are your men? Meaning, where are the men that you're mentoring? If he's like, I don't care if you know if you've got a PhD in theology." You know, you've got a great, you know, uh, great library of theological books on your shelf. I want to know where are your men? Where are the men that you're teaching to be like you, meaning to be like to be like Christ? And it's this, this sense of like we, we need to be in a mentoring relationship. You know, you know, with with the appropriate boundaries. But I've always thought we kind of need something parallel like where are the people that can mentor someone who, who just came out who just escaped and who who can take someone new and say you know if you're on the fence i don't want to i want you to have the space to make your own decisions but if you're truly out if you're truly out and yeah, yeah. you want to get involved let me let me walk you through some stuff and i, I feel like that'd be an awesome awesome niche to start to fill if possible hold, hold on one thing let me get my little okay. girl's let me just one second. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm good. Oh, just one second. He's coming to the front. So this is Ellie. Hello, Ellie. What yeah, a sweetie she, bunny. She might want to pass by. Um, our little boy is, our uh, two-year-old is having uh, trouble falling asleep, so oh, you might no. hear a little bit of crying. Oh, no. But anyway, I just, I feel like, yeah, she's uh, <laughs> about five months old here. Those eyes. Those she's eyes. Oh, absolutely here. <laughs> Hi, baby. Hi. She's sweet, but she keeps us up too much at night. <laughs> Hi. Hi there. How are you doing? <laughs> she really just we, we we knew that joke about if you had if you had this one first you would have wanted a lot more. Well, I mean we do have a lot. We got four kids, but um, boy, she's just she's a sweet she's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Oh, but you know that sense of just um, again not not talking about proselytizing, but just talking about people that really people that want to get grounded in this and that want to yeah, make a difference. It's that landing strip kind of a yeah. thing. It's like you don't want to make a church replacement. I don't mean that. I just mean like people just kind of become atheists and go into their go into the dark night. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Why? Whereas where the Christians, it's like you became a Christian. Now let's get you into Bible college. Let's, let's get you yeah. a seminary. Let's get you in the church. And it's like we kind of are missing that. Well, there is there is a group called Recovering from Religion. I don't know if you are familiar with them, Daryl Ray's group. Yep. And I think they do some of that. Um, okay. And there's other like community building things like. Oasis or uh, Sunday Assembly. I'm not sure what's out there now, but yeah, you're not wrong. There is there is a strong need for a community, um, and I think for atheism, it's mostly been the online community. And, yeah, uh, especially now. <laughs> yeah, especially. Well, yeah, especially. But um, but it, right from the beginning, at, at least for the last 20 years or so, as as the internet has grown up, all of a sudden every closet atheist out there realizes they're not alone, and that's been a huge deal. Um, yeah. Do Plus, you feel like you can fact check your preacher in real time right from the pew doesn't help either. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you feel like there's anything with um, 
with being act with activism that is kind of on your plate to get into in the next few years? Um, I'm mostly, I mostly kind of burned out on all my heavy duty activism, uh, back in the day. And now I'm just kind of concentrating on the books. Definitely. And, uh, uh, it's funny. Some days I don't feel that old and some days they're like, shit, I've been doing this for a long damn time. <laughs> and, uh, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's really good. I mean, to, to look back and say you've made such a difference is, is great. I'm, I'm more on the <clears throat> early side of it. I still feel like an old man sometimes because of lack of sleep, but um, <laughs> right. it's right. like, I'm on the flip side, but like, I really do want to make a difference and it may be, sure smaller bit time that no one may ever know my name but i want to create at least you know if not people know my name at least have resources that help people and say you there this is not just something to stumble around in and and i would love to at some point if if your schedule allows i'd love to send you just a copy of not the whole bit list of my notes but just the outline of all the topics and you'd probably be like whoa you know it's (laughs) it's like 30 pages long but it's just just the outline alone is huge yeah. But it's like when you, and I'll just, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. I mean, um, obviously the, all the stuff we talked about already, but t- going through some of the ancient religions, you know, going through what syncretism is, uh, going yeah. through Judaism, um, going through even things like, like dates, understanding how dates work with the, with the Zodiac and, and all the so forth, going through rationality, logic, and epist- I have a huge section of rationality, just going through stuff like what are our tendencies? What are the dynamics that are going on? You know, how do we truly investigate yeah. truth? How do we become critical? And what are, like, what are our interpretive hermeneutics? How do we identify how we were brainwashed or deceived? <clears throat> Just endless stuff like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, if I get hit by a bus in 10 minutes from now, <laughs> keep this in mind, go for it. <laughs> Start this thing, because it's it's great. And, and you will do great in it. And uh, uh, you don't have to have all the answers now, you, but you've already you already know where this could take you. Looks like yeah. it froze up. Did you? Did I freeze up? <clears throat> uh, I still hear you. Still hear you. See you. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you froze up for a second, so I wasn't sure if I lost you. But yeah, um, start doing it. Start doing a little YouTube thing, and uh, and see how that goes. Put it out there, and see what happens. Because I think it will. I think it will take off. I think well, it you. will grow and I think you'll love it. And I think people will love it and uh, it'll change your life. I yeah, think awesome. ab- absolutely. I'm excited. I'm, I'm very excited. I feel like I've been kind of gearing up and I think there's a, I've learned there's a point I, I, like I would advise someone if they were in a similar boat, take, take some time to just let a little bit of the waves pass over. Like just yeah. reflect on what's just happened. You just came out of a, a really bizarro land experience. Yep. And it's just kind of like, you know, where they do the same thing with Christians, like, oh, you know, some, you know, superstar movie star just got, became a Christian. Let's, let's make him a preacher now. Like, yeah. you know, th- and that they just burn out quick because right. like, they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like, but once you get kind of, once you kind of give yourself a few minutes to breathe and think, what just happened? Yeah. Then it's like, okay. Yeah. I, I have something to tell. Yeah. And it's like, I've got a story to tell and it's, you it's going to help some people. And, and your gentleness and your concern, that's going to come across. Because um, you can just tell just by talking to you how sincere and how interested you are in this and how much you want to share with people. And that's infectious. Yeah, the people, they, people respond to that. Christians will respond to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm hopeful. And if you, can, if you can be the gentle voice of reason in somebody's life like that and try to avoid getting your ego wrapped up, try to avoid yelling and screaming, you know, um, uh, I think a great, I think you'd be a real welcome, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it'd be a welcome change. It'd be a welcome change. Thank you. Um, and I think, I think it, you'd be, I think it would be awesome. I would want to watch it. I want to promote it. Well, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. I've, I've picked up a lot too from Derek, uh, with Myth Vision. He, he's, yeah, his yeah. tone is, so respectful no matter who's bringing what exactly. he's just yeah he's been a he's been a big influence on me I've, I've loved watching him not just for his content and and the content from you all but just his his yeah. tone you do learn a lot so it's awesome yeah, yeah. like he ha- he has had guests on there and it's like i could not be respectful to him it's like you are full <laughs> of shit you're crazy and uh, and he's so good about you know just drawing him out with questions and things like that and yeah, yeah all all power to him and all power to you too 
Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate your, your time. I, um, I'll uh, let you go here, but um, I would love to do this again sometime. I really would. I, I will come with a whole new list of, of topics and questions at that point or, or, or uh, subtopics from this, but um, I, I just, I really appreciate it. It's, you, no you have been one of the, like the whole, where are your men? Um, if you ever get asked that question, feel free to list my name. I'm one of the men. Um, I know it's, you know, distance because of, you know, uh, the internet, but um, you are, you become one of my mentors and I'm sure a lot of people would, would do or would say that to you, but you know, that the, of, I have to hear that because every day when I'm thinking, why am I wasting my life, you know, banging my head against this wall? That's the thing that keeps me going is people saying that. Let me ask you this real fast. How is the other thing is you're a family man and you got family time taking up all your time. Um, so give yourself the space to do both, you know, don't feel like I'm not doing enough, you know, Yeah. You know, take care of home first. And, you know, how are you and Julie getting through all this? Cause that people want to hear about that too. Um, yeah, it's, are you, are you asking, or are you just saying it's a, be a topic to talk about? Well, no, I'm just, I mean, I hope <clears throat> you guys are doing okay. Cause I know, I can't imagine how hard that must be being unevenly yoked and all. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, it's interesting. I think the, the kids with being involved is obviously a whole separate dynamic too, but um, I think we're, there's a, a lot of respect, a lot of mutual respect, um, yeah. a lot of space. I think too, just the space to say, you know, <clears throat> you do your thing, I'll do mine, and we don't yeah. have to, it's like so, somebody could be, I, mean, I, I was going to say golf, but golf isn't yeah. the best parallel because, you know, obviously golf isn't religion, but right, um, right. it's, you know, there's, you, there's, it's not necessarily a deal breaker you're saying. Yeah, it's, and it's. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's people from it. It could be, but um, I think uh, I, I think there's that. I think there's a verse, if I'm not mistaken, in um, one of the Peters, maybe, that talks about um, you know, you can redeem your unsaved spouse by gotcha. your gotcha. behavior. Yeah, um, yeah, something like that. And it's, you know, I, I think there's a sense of. You know, we, we're we're open to listening, and I, I think that's one of the biggest things. Is just that's huge. Are you willing to have conversations? And I, it's yeah. it's more like a tread very yeah. softly right now. Well, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, that'll we help. keep the that'll, trend. Help. Yeah. that'll keep you in a good headspace for dealing with other Christians too. Um, I think yeah. that's why Bart Ehrman hasn't quite gone whole hog because uh, his wife is Christian as well. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you all in agreement? You? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I I love. She says, as soon as I heard your talk, your first talk on Jesus, me is like, oh, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's it. There's no Jesus. Yeah. But yeah. So were you married? Be, like, what was the timeline of? Were you both into? I mean, I, I call it the the Bible prison. Or were you in the Bible prison before you got married, or out of the Bible prison? Um, no, we've 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 known each other for a long time, but we've only been married since 2014. Okay. Uh, and so I, yeah, I was, I was atheist long before she ever met me. Uh, okay. Yeah. And she would, she was never a Christian. I think she spent one summer doing karate for Christ because she had a crush on a boy at the local church, but that's as close as she ever got to being Christian. Gotcha. You know? So when you got married that you were both already out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's cool. I mean, it's, yeah. And it, the whole topic of, of the brainwashing, especially as it relates yeah. to, to kids, that's a whole topic. I'd oh, love I to get it. do something. I get it. And that's, you know what? There's a lot of people out there wrestling those things too. That's another cool yeah. thing about how to, yeah, be I, respectful, how to have a respectful mixed marriage too. You know, there's yeah. so many things going on in your life right now that, yeah. that people want to hear about. And I really need to get into Dale McGowan stuff too. I know he's got some excellent resources yeah. for that. Yeah. So, well, again, gonna, thank you. <clears throat> You've been more than gracious with your time. time. Um, anytime. Anytime. My so, pleasure. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. All right, Aunt Betty. <laughs> we see you. Well, thank you. I, I, I honestly, I look forward to the next time, and I'll, 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 I'll definitely give you updates as, uh, as this thing progresses. Do yeah, and yeah, and whenever you send out your first thing, let me know so I can pimp it out on Facebook. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thanks, David. David. No worries. Take care. You too.